you turn on the TV and see an urgent message. A huge asteroid is approaching the Earth. NASA experts believe that it could be up to 80 kilometers, 50 miles, in diameter, and is about to crash into our planet. This is comparable to the celestial body that destroyed the dinosaurs. If such an event were to happen again now, the impact would surely wipe out all life and burn the planet to the ground. But let's take it all in one step at a time. This is the famous Arizona Crater, and it is famous for the fact that it is almost the only meteorite crater that has retained its original shape. It is approximately the same as it was immediately after the arrival of a 50-meter meteorite 50,000 years ago. And because of its unique preservation, it seems as if it is alone. But in fact, Vredefort, Sudbury, Chicxulub, Poppygay, Manicuagan, Ackerman, Chesapeake, there are dozens of them. Erosion and natural processes quickly retouch these scars on the body of our planet. Otherwise, the landscape would be the same as on the moon. Some may have a misconception. Well, it all happened a long time ago. Perhaps all the dangerous meteorites, asteroids, and comets have already just hit. Or maybe they are just still on the way. And here we have one candidate, which in 2004 made scientists a little nervous, and not only a little. Meet Apophis. This is a rock the size of three football fields, about 325 meters in diameter. It has repeatedly looked in our direction, flying nearby. And we know for sure that it intends to visit us. When Apophis was first discovered, it was almost immediately assigned a hazard index of four on the Torino scale. This is a fairly high rating that makes you, if not worried, at least not ignore the problem. However, in 2006, Apophis was downgraded to a level 1, and by 2006, the probability of a collision was qualified as zero. But that's only on the Torino scale. In reality, there are too many variables to be sure. And to at least not be indifferent, it's enough to look at trajectory calculations rather than probabilities. And here's what we'll see. On January 9, 2013, Apophis passed at a distance of 14.5 million kilometers. It may seem like a fairly large distance. After all, the closest distance from Earth to Venus is only 38 million kilometers. So you could say that the asteroid then passed at almost planetary distance. All is well, but it will come back. And quite quickly, in 2029. The exact date when Apophis will pass close to Earth is known. April 13th, a Friday. Apophis will pass at a distance of about 38,000 kilometers. That's roughly the height of geostationary satellites. And this is not a hypothesis. These are precise calculations. You might ask, so it should be visible to the naked eye, right? And the answer won't disappoint you. It will be visible to the naked eye. However, it will look like a small speck in the night sky. But knowing the fact that this rock will pass so close to Earth, it becomes a bit scary. Currently, NASA experts assure us that the probability of a collision is practically zero. However, it's a bit scary because of that almost. But what if it comes? All life on the planet will die. No. And civilization won't be thrown into some dark medieval age. Although, of course, this uninvited guest will bring a lot of trouble, and we will experience even greater fear. Scientists assess the impact force differently because it's precisely unknown what Apophis is made of. It could be a solid rock or a rather amorphous bag of smaller pieces. Initially, NASA specialists estimated the impact force at 1480 megatons. Then, after determining the asteroid size and more detailed calculations, the sentence was softened to 506 megatons. However, it's not very reassuring. It's an entire order of magnitude, 10 times greater than the power of the infamous Soviet Tsar Bomba detonated in the new Siberian islands. Back then, in some places, it shattered windows and settlements 780 kilometers from the epicenter. However, it should be understood that there's no direct correlation between the impact force 
and 506 megatons don't mean that everything needs to be multiplied by 10 compared to the Tsar Bomba. But yes, it would be most unfortunate if the impact occurred in densely populated regions, let alone a metropolis. Let's say over Moscow. Why not? Here, Russian scientists describe astounding scenarios. Such an impact will lead to the formation of a crater the size of the Sadovoy Ring, about 5 km wide and everything living within the Moscow Ring Road MKAD, will be obliterated by the shockwave. The entire Moscow region will be engulfed in fires and severe destruction. Minor and moderate damage will extend throughout the entire Central Federal District of Russia. Unfortunately, Ukraine will also suffer significantly, and in some places windows may shatter even in Western Europe. Communication will vanish over nearly all of Europe due to the intense ionization of the air. Abnormal weather phenomena will be observed worldwide for several years after the event. These will be typical occurrences accompanying major volcanic eruptions. Some regions might experience cooling, others drought, and still others rapid temperature fluctuations. Almost certainly, we will witness the most beautiful sunsets we couldn't have imagined. This already occurred in 1991, after the massive eruption of Mount Pinatubo. Even earlier, in April 1815, when the catastrophic eruption of Mount Tambora led to the so-called year without a summer in Europe, it was accompanied by breathtaking sunsets that many artists of the time depicted. We will all suffer greatly from such an event, but overall the situation won't be apocalyptic. And though humanity won't be the same from that moment on... Oh, how irritating this phrase has been since 2020. Stop, 2029. Stop. Ahem. Sadness. Emotions. All right, moving on. So, even though humanity won't be the same as before, the dust will settle, the world will quickly recover, and popular excursion routes will lead to the crater where Moscow once stood. But still, there's nothing pleasant in this story, and everyone will be saddened by it. So obviously it's preferable for this not to happen. But the question arises, can we do anything about it? Can we somehow prevent this? Or are our only options to dig bunkers and hide underground? Interestingly, we can actually do something. And serious experiments have already been conducted. Not just in the laboratory, but in space with a real asteroid. And it was successful. But let's go through it step by step. The discussion of protecting the planet from unwanted invaders like Apophil, or worse, has been ongoing for a long time. Thanks to Hollywood, we've firmly learned that it won't happen without Bruce Willis. Reality, as always, is much more prosaic. We are far from delivering an entire drilling rig with a nuclear bomb to an asteroid. Furthermore, destroying the asteroid is beyond our capability, and it's a risky venture from the do-no-harm perspective. But it's more realistic to alter the trajectory of the celestial bandit so that it stays far away from our peaceful planet. Though at first glance, this also seems overly optimistic. In reality, the question is how much time we have between detecting the threat and the predicted collision. If it's a matter of months, then the chances of altering its course are virtually zero. If it's years and decades, as in the case of Apophis, then there are chances. Scientists, enthusiasts, and dreamers have come up with some things that could work. Nuclear charges, gravitational tractors, ion beam, focused solar beam, solar sail, electromagnetic catapults, kinetic impactor, and many other options of varying exoticness. Renowned planetologist Eugene Shoemaker, yes, the same one known for the Shoemaker-Levy comet, proposed in 1996 to release clouds of water vapor onto the asteroid's trajectory, gradually slowing it down. All of this is just to slightly change the trajectory of the celestial body. This microscopic alteration over decades will eventually lead the asteroid far away from Earth. But no matter how dubious all these proposed methods may seem, NASA tested one of them on a real asteroid. We're talking about the kinetic impactor and the asteroid Dimorphos.
On the night of November 24, 2021, a Falcon 9 rocket launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base carrying the DART spacecraft. DART stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test, and the word DART translates to throw. So, the mission's objectives are quite apparent. On September 26, 2022, the spacecraft reached the Dimorphos asteroid, and at 2314 GMT, an epic collision occurred. Dimorphos is smaller than Apophis, but not by much. 160 meters isn't that large, only about one and a half football fields. But if this flying rock were to decide to crash into our planet, it wouldn't seem small at all. So after the collision of the DART spacecraft with Dimorphos, scientists had to wait for some time, holding their breath to assess the results. However, it quickly became evident that the experiment was deemed a success. It's worth noting that Dimorphos doesn't travel through space alone. It's accompanied by its big brother, the asteroid Didymos. The latter has a diameter of almost 800 meters and Dimorphos orbits around it. So the impact of the DART spacecraft slowed Dimorphos' rotation around its more massive companion by a full 32 minutes? This was the first practical test of a real planetary defense system. The good news is that it worked. In the future, when detecting asteroids and comets that pose a real threat to Earth, the results of the DART experiment will play a crucial role in humanity's survival. In 2024, Europe plans to contribute to planetary defense. The European Space Agency intends to send the spacecraft, HERA, to the Dimorphos Didymos asteroid system. It will measure the size and explore the morphology of the crater, formed as a result of the DART collision, allowing us to more accurately assess the effectiveness of the kinetic impactor. All of this adds a bit of optimism regarding our ability to deal with global threats of this scale. What do you think? Is it the end for humanity? Or will we destroy each other faster with nuclear weapons? Write in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. Ahead of you lies something you wouldn't want to miss.